Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be working on this no Nintendo console right here. The customer sent it in and they did not elaborate as to what's going on. Nintendo console or no Nintendo. Anyway, let's go ahead and hook it up to power and see what's happening. And we'll of course need our cable here for TV output. Don't know what Nintendo was thinking removing the AV port. I mean, at least we had mono audio. Jeez. Get our uh, illustrious RC Pro-Am game plugged in. Our little Sony TV is on right here, as you can clearly see. Probably not. Nothing. So is that what's supposed to be wrong? No power? Let's try another game, just sanity check. Nothing, okay. I'm pretty sure my power adapter works. All right, we're gonna set our multimeter to AC, get our negative in the center here and our positive on the outside. And we're getting 10 volts, so we know the power adapter has no problems. I guess for sanity check purposes, we'll hook up yet another NES. Old Toasty, not to be confused with Old Rochi. Will it boot first try? But do I have it on the right channel? <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep all this footage. There we go. And remember folks, change your channel. We do indeed have Tetris running over here. So our power adapter definitely works. And so does our RF adapter. Guess now we need to figure out what's going on with that guy. All right, so first thing we gotta do is open this thing up. You're zooming out too far again, stay. We have the toolkit right here. Let's go ahead and get our NES bit out. I believe it was the larger of the two. Yes, sir. Guess we can get this out of the way for the moment. Almost, almost. Come on, there. Console looks like it's in fairly decent shape. I don't see any corrosion, at least so far. This doesn't look half bad. I see a couple of stray fibers in here, but that's not really a big deal. Let's get the remainder of the screws out of here. I'm going to need our traditional Phillips, which I guess is gonna be this. remember we have the two longer silvers holding down the cartridge port slot and it looks like we have three screws right here and one final screw yeah this console looks like it's in very good shape very nice huh looks like there's been some work done prior yeah, that's not factory. These are gonna need to be touched up a little bit. Is that a crack solder joint? Is that even possible? What the heck? Yeah, someone has definitely been in here prior. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and touch up these solder joints. Maybe that'll allow this console to power back on. So we'll start by adding flux on all these suspect joints, which there appear to be like 20 of them. Plus that crack solder joint, which I've never seen happen before. These look like they could be touched up as well. And these, okay, anything else we need to look at here? Oof, is that a cut? Let's get my soldering iron out, does that look strange? Let's see, where am I, where am I? Oh, I guess. Hope that's not touching right there. That would be the reason for problems, that's the case. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a cut trace right here. We sure do. Okay, how are we gonna fix this? Well, I guess we'll get some desoldering braid first. So I wanna move that leg out of there. This might not be easy without causing further damage, we'll see. And I guess we can cut it back a tad. Yeah, we definitely have trace damage right there. All right, let's focus on reflowing these joints before we progress to that. If I had to guess, I'd probably say that that trace is the reason we have no power. Reason I say that, even though I've not worked on a tremendous amount of these, I believe that line goes probably to the power button or power switch in this case. So if we follow it from right here, so it's two lines, and it looks like one of them goes to the power switch. So that definitely could be the reason why we're having problems. 
So it's just gonna be the trace rebuilding and of course those joints. So now let's go ahead and bring out the solder and we'll touch up these joints and then we'll focus in on that messed up trace. Some of these joints, I do not like how they look. I don't think they used ROHS compliant solder, but it's really difficult to tell. And this one looked like it had cracked solder joints. Or it had been touched up sometime in the past. Ah yes, this area, that yeah. That's where uh, we were seeing a lot of cracks. All right, I think I think that's acceptable. All right, now we can focus on this area again. All right, so we definitely have a cut right there. Let's go ahead and bring out our tool. You can obtain it on Ally Express, Amazon. I think now is a great time to spray this whole thing down with some alcohol. You could also use some flux off if you choose to do so. I think it's going to be time for these brushes to be cleaned too. It's a pretty gunky feeling. So now we need to rebuild this trace. I'm going to use a capacitor leg. All right, so we do have our trace that we're going to use right over here, or our capacitor leg. It's going to be our new trace now. All right, so we're going to add some flummox. Our Steri Flux, which is the Steri V3TF. We'll go ahead and add a little bit of leaded solder to our soldering iron tip and maneuver in this new leg here, or in this case, uh, the trace. So now sometimes these capacitor legs are a little rigid, so we're gonna have to be careful. We don't wanna make things worse. All right, so let's go ahead and get our multimeter. Get that in continuity mode, which is beep mode. Looks like we have a good line. Now is this touching this? It is not. And this is of course connected over there. I think it's safe to say we've successfully rebuilt that trace, so let's go ahead and power up the console and see what happens. All right, we're gonna try it out with Tetris. Am I in the wrong channel or something? Doesn't seem to be working with Tetris. Maybe RC Pro-Am? It's trying, but it's not doing it. Doesn't appear to be working. Uh, I can tell you that the CPU is getting quite warm. I don't know if that's normal. It's possible that something else is done to this console and I'm just not seeing it at the moment. What did they do to this thing? I guess now would be the time to see if we have a short. So I've just applied some alcohol and we'll go ahead and power this on. Huh. So the CPU seems to get mighty warm here. The alcohol seems to be evaporating quite quickly off of the CPU. It's attempting to display picture, but this CPU is getting very hot. Very hot. Very hot to the touch. Cannot touch it. There could be something shorting out the CPU and or the CPU itself is shorted. All right, so we're gonna be using our FLIR camera. Nothing appears to be getting hot at the moment. Now, once we hit power, we have two things that apparently are getting pretty warm. So this one right here and this one right here. So this thing says it's already at 80, 90. Wow, it's getting really hot. So at this moment, I'm gonna confer with the customer and we'll see if they'd like to order some parts and we'll go ahead and take a shot at trying to repair this console. First thing we need to do is remove the CPU and verify that the short is gone. This is gonna be quite the long process so we're just gonna skip ahead. All right, and I finished removing the CPU, which was not very easy to do. Next thing to do is of course to monitor the console after we powered it on to see if anything is getting warm. So let's go ahead and do that now. Of course, I already have my FLIR camera here. 
And right now, ooh, it looks like we're getting blazingly hot on the PPU. It's getting really hot, actually. We did purchase the CPU for this console, and after many delays, and of course it did arrive, however, that's not gonna help us because the PPU looks like it has a short as well, and I'm pretty sure if I remove the PPU, we'll most likely have some kind of other short on this board. So at this point in time, I'm declaring this console a no-fix, which is quite unfortunate because these old NES consoles are, while not tough to come by, they are pretty rare these days. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.